everybody doing? I believe you are all fine. I welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Jemi Naftali on the Pediatric World, the only channel whereby we discuss about kids welfare, medical problems and we try finding solutions. Here we want we we are usually layman so that every person is able to understand. We want to be a layman because we are creating awareness on common illnesses affecting children while growing up. So welcome into today's episode. And into today's episode, we are continuing on our topic on severe acute malnutrition, the malnutrition in children. So today we are going to see how we diagnose severe acute malnutrition. When this child has malnutrition, comes to hospital, how are we able to know to go about a diagnosing? Remember in our last uh, uh, episode, we discussed on how these babies present and also the risk factors. If you haven't watched, please I refer you to the previous episode. So how do we diagnose a severe acute malnutrition? This involves a relevant history and also clinical examination. Here is upon us, uh, professional caregivers. When the child comes and you're thinking of malnutrition, they, you have to get a very detailed history. You want to, the history is we ask mothers on questions that will help us, will help us to lead us into malnutrition. And there are questions that are must ask. I mean, we must ask these questions. So these are uh, questions like what? Uh, the list of questions include number one, how is the child's appetite? Remember we say these babies lack, uh, they have poor appetite. So we ask the mom, how has been the child's appetite? What is the child uh, usually fed on? What is the common meal? The common meal that these babies is, uh, is given mostly and the frequency, we want to know the frequency after how long is this child fed? This is a very, very important question. Uh, how long is the feeding done? And who normally feeds the baby? This is also very, very important. Whoever feeds the baby, is it the mother? Is it the whoever takes care of the, of the child at home and the mother is not there? This is a very, very important question. Uh, other questions we ask, is the child breastfeeding currently at that time that they have come to hospital? Are they breastfeeding? And if not, why are they not breastfeeding? Why do they stop? And when? When was it stopped? And maybe the reason why they stopped breastfeeding. Remember we said a risk factor to malnutrition is a early introduction of complementary food, early weaning. So the, child, the children are not breastfed for the six months. So we need to know when, uh, if the child is breastfeeding and if not, why they stopped and when did the breastfeeding stop? Uh, this is uh, our nutritional history. We want to know uh, all these things about the feeding of this child, everything about the feeding of this child. Um, other questions we want to ask, does this baby have uh, diarrhea and vomiting? If yes, how is the frequency? So this child, the mother will tell you they started diarrheaing like a week ago. So how many times, this is the frequency, how many times were these episodes of diarrhea and vomiting? Very, very important. And what type of diarrhea is it? Is it bloody? Does it contain blood? Very important questions here. Um, what are the sources of water? And where do the sources of water for drinking for these children do this uh do the is the water boiled we want to know because we say uh, the contamination of water and food which is due to poor hygiene will lead us to getting malnutrition so we want to know the source of water for drinking for these children um we want to go on something we call past medical and uh, medical history the previously were there episodes of uh, vomiting before uh, how is the last passage of urine? We want to know the pre, uh, the other presentations of cough. Remember, we said uh, also other infections like cough will uh, give us severe acute malnutrition. Uh, so we want to know all this. Um, we want to know also the social history. This is usually like very uh, parents.
parents might think this is very private but it is also very important to us when it comes to social history what are the kind of questions we ask in social history we want to know um the kind of family the child has come from uh, what is the level of education what is the level of education of these parents imagine we want to know this why are we asking about the level of education? Remember we said that ignorance, lack of knowledge will make these parents not to, they don't have, they are not aware of what kind of, of food they're supposed to give their babies, not aware of what uh, protein uh, consists of and other vitamins and everything. So that's why we want to know the level of education, very important here. Uh, their level of income, yes how much maybe do they earn because are these are parents again able to afford uh the food for this baby remember that uh the history is important the social history here is very very important because the child's health uh, depends on the parents ability to afford good food this is why we are asking all these things uh some questions maybe i know they may be disturbing but we really want to get a uh, deep into when so that we diagnose this severe acute malnutrition so does the child have a cough again uh all these questions we need to really ask that is all about a detailed history uh, of this child how about physical examination we also want to examine we said it is diagnosis is all about history taking and physical exam how about physical examination what do we do we want to look for any signs of severe circulatory um uh, impairment this is, remember we said previously the shock we covered the shock so the shock may come in because of uh, diarrhea and vomiting so we want to see to examine and see uh, some of the uh, signs and symptoms of uh, shock are their uh, cold extremities and all that um we also want to know their weight because ch children with severe acute malnutrition their weight is going to be way way below than the expected weight uh with their age so we really want to know their weight the length also we want to know any signs of infections uh when we are we having um breathing difficulties their temperatures are we having fevers again puffiness of the face remember we talked about edema so we want to see if the child is uh, has edema on the face severe palma uh, uh pala so the pala remember this is how we check for uh the level of blood uh how the hb level um the hb is what we measure to know uh the level of blood uh, in these children so the palma pala is the palm is this one we say so it is going to be very very white and you see that we don't have enough blood here so it is very white so this is what we call palma pala these are signs again we check we want to combine and see in physical exam uh, we also want to know, uh, do, uh, is there bilateral edema? Edema, again, the swelling. Remember we said the upper, I mean, uh, the, the hands, the swelling of the legs, is it the whole body? Remember, we, there's a way we say if it's mild, if it is moderate edema, and if it is severe edema. So this, again, is a physical exam. Uh, check for any signs of vitamin A deficiency. Uh, why do we want to know signs of vitamin A deficiency? It is because vitamin A deficiency worsens, even worsens the malnutrition. So we want to see if we have those signs of uh, uh, vitamin A deficiency. And these are some of these are corneal ulceration, the, the black part is the ulceration. Conjunctiva, are they dry? The conjunctiva is the white part of the eye. Is it so dry? Uh, uh, these are some of the uh, signs of the uh, vitamin A deficiency. Uh, we also want to know to check for skin changes like in Kwashiako, uh, the severe acute malnutrition. We want to see the changes. Are there hypo or hyperpigmentation? Remember we are say, we said last uh, previously that they are going to have either uh, dark spots or light spots. So this is hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. So we want to check for these signs, the, uh, the skin changes when we are doing physical exams. Um, also, we can conduct something we call appetite test because we say they have poor appetite. We can conduct a poor 
I mean, we can conduct our appetite test. And this is by giving something we call ready to use therapeutic feed. Those feed we they sip and we are able to test if the appetite is right. So my people, this is it. We want to diagnose a uh, severe acute malnutrition. So we do it by doing the uh, detailed history taking from the mother. We want to do physical exam. That is all about this topic, today's uh, topic. So I hope you, you get all this. I hope now you understand why we ask some of these questions. They are very private, some of them, but they help us in getting into diagnosis. So thank you so much for staying tuned. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, uh, reach, uh, share this video so that they can reach many people. Leave a comment down on the comment section. Again, in the end of the every episode, there is my email there. You can check, uh, you can write me an email on anything concerning this topic uh, so that we may discuss it. Even what you want us to discuss next, you can ask either on the comment section and also in my uh, in my email. So thank you again for staying tuned. Uh, till next time. Bye bye.